Hello, my name is Christine Rumsey and I'm a hydrologist with the U.S. Geological Survey Utah Water Science Center. Hopefully you all were able to listen to Allison Schiff's introductory Saline Lakes presentation and the Water Quantity Team's presentation. Today, my colleague Casey Smith with the USGS Oregon Water Science Center and I are going to build on those past presentations and discuss water quality monitoring of Great Basin Terminal Lake ecosystems. The Great Basin spans across the Western United States, covering parts of Oregon, California, Nevada, and Utah. The terminal lakes we are investigating based on the list provided in the Congressional Saline Lakes Act include Summer Lake, Lake Abert, the Warner Lakes, Harney Lake, and Malheur Lake in Oregon, Goose Lake, Eagle Lake, Honey Lake, and Mono Lake in California, Carson Sink, Carson Lake, Walker Lake, Ruby Lake, and Franklin Lake in Nevada, and Great Salt Lake and Fish Springs National Wildlife Refuge in Utah. The water quality team is based out of two offices, the Oregon Water Science Center and the Utah Water Science Center. The Oregon Water Science Center leads monitoring efforts at lakes in Oregon and California, while the Utah Water Science Center leads efforts at lakes in Utah and Nevada as well as at Mono Lake. The Utah Water Science Center team also helps with sample prep and analyses. Because basic water quality information of terminal lake ecosystems in the region is lacking, our project focus is to assess the physical and chemical properties of the water, commonly referred to as water quality, in the Great Basin terminal lake ecosystems, and to understand how these properties vary with changing hydrologic conditions. Water quality both informs our understanding of hydrologic processes and influences food web characteristics and prey availability for birds in a given habitat, acting as a key nexus between hydrology and ecology. Dissolved oxygen, salinity, temperature, and nutrients are all components of water quality. The properties of water in a lake or an impoundment are a result of local geology, physical conditions, water management decisions, and biological processes. Since terminal lakes do not have surface water outflows, solutes can concentrate in the lake basins as water is removed through evaporation and evapotranspiration. Changes in water quality can be used to determine sources of inflow, such as from freshwater springs. Water quality parameters can affect the organisms that survive and thrive in a water body. For example, brine shrimp thrive in hypersaline conditions, but populations decrease if it's too salty. The major cations and anions, such as potassium chloride versus sodium chloride dominated systems, can affect which species of brine shrimp live there. Other parameters like high turbidity can prevent plants and algae from growing in a water body. But it isn't just water quality that affects organisms. Photosynthetic organisms such as algae and submerged vegetation also affect water quality through the release of oxygen into the water and uptake of dissolved carbon that affects the pH. Thus, the biology is affected by and also affects water quality characteristics and variability. Water quality in the terminal lakes of the Great Basin ranges from freshwater, like Malheur Lake in Oregon, to hypersaline, such as Great Salt Lake in Utah, and from turbid, like Honey Lake in California, to clear, such as Walker Lake in Nevada. Water quality reflects stressors on the system. A cyanobacterial bloom was observed in Heart Lake this summer. In addition, the Warner Lakes may have been affected by the Warner Peak Fire, which spread to over 65,000 acres in southeastern Oregon in 2024. We also know the food web composition changes as a function of salinity. Water quality, and in particular salinity, provides the foundation for which organisms can survive in a given habitat. Water quality is dynamic in terminal lake ecosystems, and our overarching goal is to understand water quality properties throughout the Great Basin and through time by collecting both discrete or one time and continuous water quality data. The key science questions driving our monitoring efforts include the following. First, what are the water quality conditions of Great Basin terminal lake ecosystems, and how do those conditions change across the region and during different hydrologic conditions? that is during spring, summer, and fall seasons, as well as across multiple water years. Our primary water quality topics of interest at this stage of the project include salinity and water type, or the water's cation and anion composition, as well as the processes affecting water quality. 
Second, how does water management affect water quality conditions in impounded wetlands? Impounded wetlands are those created by some water control feature, such as a dike or berm. Third, what are reliable, easy to measure proxies for salinity? For example, can water density or specific conductance be used to reliably approximate salinity concentrations across the range of water types in the region? This will inform monitoring strategies moving forward. Fourth, how does water quality change as it moves through a system and through different seasons? This helps us understand how to collect representative water samples across the diverse habitats that occur in the region. And finally, what water quality conditions are ideal for phytoplankton populations that are the base of the food web and macroinvertebrates? Since the summer of 2023, site reconnaissance has been a major component of our work. Many of our lakes are remote and do not have easy access points or boat launches. Information gathered during these reconnaissance trips have helped us to better understand the hydrology of each system and to determine where sampling is possible. These trips have also provided valuable information to other Saline Lakes teams, from water quantity to remote sensing efforts. Because salinity is a key parameter affecting habitat quality and biological productivity, our water quality monitoring at this stage focuses on the quantification of salinity concentration and water type across the Great Basin Terminal Lake Ecosystem Network. We use water quality monitoring instruments to measure dissolved oxygen, pH, specific conductance, turbidity, and water temperature in situ, meaning these data are measured in the field. We use these instruments to collect both discrete and continuous data, where discrete refers to measurements taken at a point in time and continuous refers to collecting many data points over time from one location. We also collect discrete water samples from locations across the study region and analyze them for total dissolved solids, cations, anions, water density, and specific conductance. These data allow us to measure salinity concentrations in multiple ways, determine water type, and evaluate the feasibility of various proxies of salinity, like water density and specific conductance, to provide estimates of salinity concentration. To reduce laboratory costs and to expedite turnaround times of results, we established a workflow for sample processing and analysis at the USGS Utah Water Science Center and the University of Utah. A subset of samples was also sent to the USGS National Water Quality Laboratory for quality assurance purposes. To date, the Utah Water Science Center has processed over 600 samples, analyzing them for total dissolved solids, cations, anions, water density, and specific conductance. Our water quality sampling approach aims to capture the spatial and temporal variability in water quality of Great Basin Terminal Lake ecosystems. We know that water quality changes through time as a function of season and hydrologic condition. We also know that water quality varies widely across terminal lake ecosystems throughout the region. Because of limited resources, it is not possible for us to fully capture the spatial and temporal variability in water quality that exists in these ecosystems. There is a trade-off between collecting samples at many locations to capture greater spatial variability versus measuring water quality fluctuations at high temporal frequency at a few locations. In other words, the frequency of sample collection decreases as we try to cover more area. We've tried to find a balance between spatial and temporal variability by using a diverse sampling design with multiple sampling components. First, we've deployed water quality monitoring instruments that measure several different parameters at 30 minute increments at five different lakes. Monthly water quality samples and discrete measurements are collected in collaboration with the Saline Lakes Prey Availability Team. Monthly samples are collected at six different lakes that include more than 35 different sampling locations. These monthly samples are analyzed for major cations and anions, density, and total dissolved solids concentrations. Discrete samples are collected seasonally, that is, three times per year at over 100 different locations to analyze for major cations, anions, density, 
specific conductance, and total dissolved solids. Finally, we also leverage other sampling efforts to collect opportunistic samples by sending sample bottles to various teams or entities we know are heading to sampling locations outside of our selected sites, but within the study area. There are spatial and temporal trade-offs between our different sample sets. For regional synoptic surveys, or surveys conducted at a specific point in time, we have collected over 300 samples from 125 distinct locations three times per year. In collaboration with the prey availability team, we have collected 100 samples from 37 different sampling locations monthly. And lastly, our deployed water quality monitoring instruments have collected over 5,000 measurements at five sites, capturing water quality variability every 30 minutes. Since the start of the project, we have developed several collaborations with internal and external partners to leverage funding and increase our ability to collect water quality data from more locations across the Great Basin. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is integral for our sampling on their refuges. They inform us about evolving water and habitat conditions and generously allow us to use their bunkhouses during multi-day trips. We partner with the Fallon Paiute Shoshone tribe in Nevada to expand monitoring in the Lahontan Valley wetlands. The University of Utah partners with us to provide cost-effective analytical services. Our partnership with Utah State University and the Great Salt Lake Ecosystem Program expands bioenergetics research at Great Salt Lake to understand abiotic factors of plant and macroinvertebrate productivity. Through a partnership with the University of California at Santa Barbara's Sierra Nevada Aquatic Research Laboratory, we obtain monthly water samples from Mono Lake. And finally, we support the USGS Nevada Water Science Center's ongoing monitoring efforts at Walker Lake, which is a cost-effective way for us to expand data collection to that system. All of these partnerships enable an expanded water quality monitoring program in the Great Basin. As a result of our team's sampling campaigns, as well as through our internal and external partnerships, our water quality data set now spans across Great Basin Terminal Lake ecosystems and has vastly increased our understanding of the variability in salinity concentration and water type across the region. Samples from the water quality team cover the greatest geographic extent, while partnerships like those at Mono and Walker Lakes fill in key sampling locations that would be difficult for us to cover on our own. In all, over 600 water samples and over 1,300 discrete water monitor measurements have been made since the summer of 2023 due to the efforts of multiple sampling teams and partnerships. To give you an idea of the type of water quality data we're collecting at sites throughout the region, We've selected a few key sites to illustrate the variability we observed in water quality. To start, let's take a look at specific conductance data collected at the Stillwater National Wildlife Refuge, which includes Carson Sink, the terminus of the Carson River, and is a vital component of the Lahontan Valley Wetland Network near Fallon, Nevada. Stillwater National Wildlife Refuge is composed of numerous managed impoundments that create a wetland complex with diverse habitat and water quality conditions. In August of 2024, our teams collected over 36 in situ water quality measurements and 10 different water quality samples across this wetland complex. Specific conductance, which is a proxy for salinity concentration, varied from 275 microsiemens per centimeter to over 200,000 microsiemens per centimeter, illustrating the wide range and water quality conditions that occur in these terminal lake habitats. For reference, drinking water is in the range of 200 to 800 microsiemens per centimeter, while seawater is about 50,000 microsiemens per centimeter. Fresher conditions occur at the inflows at the west edge of the refuge and vary to more saline conditions located at terminal ponds at the north edge of the refuge. From these data, we learn how salinity and water chemistry evolve across the wetland complex and with habitat type. And we can also observe salinity change in different seasons and with changing water management actions. We conducted similar monitoring at the Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge in September of 2024. Similar to Stillwater National Wildlife Refuge, we observed a large range in specific conductance across this wetland complex, 
where specific conductance values range from 700 to 27,000 microsiemens per centimeter. This refuge is largely fed by surface water from the Bear River, where measured specific conductance values are low. As water is diverted through the different impoundments, water chemistry and salinity concentrations change, creating a mix of fresh and saline habitats. By the time the water flows out of the refuge, salinity concentrations have increased and the inflow to Bear River Bay is much more concentrated with salt than water from the Bear River. The Summer Lake Wildlife Area in southeastern Oregon is fed by water from the Anna River. There are impoundments throughout the wildlife area that create various water quality conditions, ranging from approximately 200 microsiemens per centimeter to 32,000 microsiemens per centimeter. The pH and turbidity vary substantially, depending on the impoundment. In August 2024, we collected water quality data in the afternoon of August 26th, and then again in the morning of August 27th to assess temporal changes. Dissolved oxygen concentrations in some locations were very high in the afternoon and then very low the following morning. Eagle Lake is a vast freshwater lake in California. Water flowing into the lake in August measured about 150 microsiemens per centimeter, while water quality on the eastern shores were around 3,000 microsiemens per centimeter. Differences in water depths affect water quality conditions in the northern and southern portions of the lake. To recap, we have collected a total of 601 water samples and collected over 1,300 discrete measurements since the summer of 2023 from regional water quality sampling trips by our team and those of our partners. The number of in situ measurements and water samples collected at each lake varies but multiple measurements have been made at each site in most cases. The greatest number of samples have been collected across Great Salt Lake wetland habitats, while the fewest number of samples have been collected at Harney Lake as a result of dry conditions and difficulties with access to sampling sites. In situ water quality measurements are the most efficient and cost effective way to collect water quality information across the region and at higher frequencies. In addition, Collected water samples are critical to supplement our understanding of water chemistry and salinity concentrations. One way we collect high frequency data without being at the site is by deploying continuous water quality monitors in one location for multiple months. We deployed five water quality monitoring instruments to capture data every 30 minutes for water temperature, dissolved oxygen, pH, specific conductance, and turbidity during the spring, summer, and fall of 2024. Instruments were deployed in two managed wetlands, Summer Lake Wildlife Area and Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge, and three lakes, Summer Lake, Lake Abert, and Malheur Lake. Our water quality monitoring has formed the foundation for a robust water quality data set that will allow us to better understand Terminal Lake ecosystem hydrology and ecology across the Great Basin. Specifically, we will be able to quantify salinity and water type variability across the region and for different seasons, providing valuable insights into hydrological processes and changing habitat conditions. By linking salinity variability to changes in phytoplankton density and composition, we will also start to understand how salinity affects the base of food webs. With the data we have and continue to collect, we will also be able to evaluate the effect of water management on water quality which has important implications for keeping habitats in productive and healthy conditions. By evaluating salinity using multiple measurement methods, we hope to provide recommendations on reliable proxies for salinity measurement that will enable more cost-effective, widespread, and frequent salinity monitoring. And finally, with ongoing monitoring, we expect to develop an understanding of key drivers of salinity fluctuation which will inform how habitat conditions are expected to evolve under changing climatic and anthropogenic influences. What do we have in store for 2025? We plan to quality check the data collected in 2023 and 2024. We will continue to collect discrete samples and measurements throughout the Great Basin. We will deploy additional continuous water quality monitoring instruments and dissolved oxygen sensors to measure phytoplankton response to water temperature, depth, and specific conductance. Thank you for joining us on the Water Quality Science Pillar Seminar for the Saline Lake Ecosystems Integrated Water Availability Assessment.